always curious about the connection between collecting games and then pushing to get like high scores because for me back in the day I was always the kind of person that would like mess up on that kind of stuff I remember getting like the Cobra Commander G.I. Joe with the face mask and everything it was like a special oh, yeah. edition it's like oh keep that locked up you know or the Star Wars toys and I was never the kind of person that could do that same thing with high scores you know I'd play and I want to win I want to go yeah. but man I, I could never push for that so it's kind of awesome to have people that do that. And today we're talking to someone that not only has Twin Galaxy Records, but also collects retro gaming stuff. So that's like, that's double awesome. And, and we're here and happy to be talking with Terry uh, Bertlow. Thanks for coming on and talking with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. So as far as collecting, I mean, that in itself can be like huge, especially with retro gaming. I mean, I see a lot of people doing it and a lot of people have different methods of how they do it because you can go out and find some of these games like a friend of mine Alex has saw games where it costs like hundreds of dollars for a game and some oh, yeah. collectors say hey I'm not going after that I'm just going after what I can I'm not going to go deep into my savings account to do that <laughs> for you like what is your collecting method um I hit the pawn shops uh goodwills uh, yard sales um there's a couple video game stores that I hit in Des Moines uh, when I go up there every once in a while, sometimes I can get, like, a pretty good deal on it. Um, and, and the reality of it is it actually becomes a disease. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, uh, but it's fun. I like it. I enjoy it. And fortunate enough, I'm fortunate enough to have a wife um, that supports it with me. So, um, like, right now, uh, I haven't bought anything new for a while. Um, just haven't been able to really find anything. But I am cruising up to Des Moines tomorrow, so I'm hoping to score something tomorrow. We'll see what happens. Yeah, so like when I see just other collection shows, because they have all, all types of reality collection shows, it's kind of interesting, like the method methodology that they use. Like they'll go to, like, like you said, uh, they might go to a garage sale or something like that. With games, I guess it could be kind of hit or miss because you never know if a person actually has games, collected games. I mean... How do you know, like, when you're going to go out to these shops it, it, ahead of time? Do you know that they have games, or just like a hit or miss? Um, well, some some of the shops that okay, there's an example like there's one in Des Moines um, that I that I frequent quite a bit. It's called JCD and Hobby. Really, really cool store. Um, they specialize in. I mean, they have video games. They have like everything from like Atari Twenty Six Hundred all the way up to like today's gaming. Nice. You know, with like your PlayStation Four and xbox one um they also uh, they also sell um collectible action figures which is really cool still in the box i'm talking stuff like that i had when i was a kid and i'm like so jealous because i wish i still had half the crap that i had when i was a kid and i don't have it anymore um they also sell um vinyl records which is really cool it's another thing that i collect outside of gaming um, and that's also a place where they have, like, people go and they have, like, the card games, um, like Magic. Uh, and they have, like, Pokemon tournaments and things like that. And they have a really, really big collection of games up there. What would be, like, I guess the top collection? Like, if you had a museum and you want to have this your centerpiece with all the laser bars around it so people <laughs> can't touch it, what would that be? In, in my collection right now, yeah. you're saying? Yeah. You know, I probably nothing. I really don't. I mean, I'm pretty open with, with my collection. Um, I let people touch it, look at it, whatever. Uh, I even loan games out sometimes. Oh, I, don't, yeah. I, th I don't think I really have anything. Personally, I don't, I don't know. I really don't think I have anything of that significant value. I mean, it's all valuable to me, of course, and other people, but I really don't see myself putting anything like in like a little laser containment unit <laughs> <laughs> well does space become an issue like because i've seen people where they have like a room or their I've, man i actually have a room and it's actually i'm actually running out of space oh. to be honest yeah um you st it starts filling up quick especially when you start getting into the classic arcade games <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, exactly. and, and, and pinball machines so oh man it, nice it, it uh, yeah, it takes up space. Uh, currently, right now, I have uh, I have Nintendo's Donkey Kong Jr. I have Rockola Eyes. Um, I have a Nintendo Versus cabinet it has Versus Golf. Uh, looking to get something different in that. Not really a golf person, but hey, it's I I got it pretty cheap. So, um, and then I have a 1964 uh, North Star, which is a, a Gopley machine, and then I have a 84. Um, 
Bally William, uh, excuse me, Bally Midway um, Alien Star pinball machine. Wow. Nice. So, and then, and then currently right now too, uh, the my NES collection. Um, I'm close to 300 games right now in that collection. I have about 150 Atari games. Uh, Super Nintendo, I have about a, oh about 100, 125. Sega Genesis about 75. It, 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 and then on top of uh, all of like the actual like little knickknacks and toys and just the collectible stuff, it's it's crazy. It's just I have a whole room full. It's unreal, and I'm running out of space. Well, has there been something where you went and because I remember watching some of the shows, and I remember watching uh, the show um, with uh, the friends of uh, Kevin Smith uh, that they had on AMC, uh, oh. Comic Book Men, and they went out and they saw like. They went to a, uh, someone's gar- garage sale and they were like, oh my God, this person had like all these classic comic books that they just couldn't believe that were like wrapped and things like yeah. that. Did you run across anything like that where you were just looking through someone's, you know, stuff and you're like, wow, they have this game? I can't believe it. Um, yeah, actually a couple of years ago that happened. Um, we were over, I can't remember where it was at. We were somewhere in Illinois. And someone had like this huge yard sale. We're like, we gotta turn around, you know, throw the brakes on, turn around, go back. <laughs> so we go back and we start, you know, start cruising this yard sale. And, like, there's this whole table, and they had a whole bunch of Game Boy games. Well, they had like the Zelda game for for Game Boy, and they had like the red and the blue Pokemon. Nice. For a dollar a piece, I, I, I shit you not, a dollar a piece. Awesome. And I was like, whoo swooped them up i just i cannot believe you know some people they, they really don't know what it's worth so sometimes if you're fortunate enough to get good deals like that then you have other people who actually know the value they take the time to look up the value and and so they have a general idea of what it's worth one of the biggest things i do not like um is like ebay oh yeah you know what i mean like sometimes you know on some things it's a good reference point to see what it's worth but what drives me nuts is when you have people, okay, an example, they have, like, the Mario Duck Hunt, okay, which is fairly common. There's so many of them out there, and you have people on there, we got the super rare, you know, Mario Duck Hunt, you know, like, 75 bucks. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I, saw that ga- I saw that game for, like, 50 cents. Because, I, you know, I, I, I have uh, extra games and stuff. I do flea markets and whatnot, and... You know, I, literally, I sell that game for fifty cents because it's just so common. It's not, it's not worth that much. Yeah, I mean, it's I've have talked to collectors who said that you know I, they don't even go to eBay. Like for them, it's not only just trying to find those games, and sometimes they are going after rare games, and that's part no. of it. But they said it's part of the travel. Like you said, they'll be out, and then they'll see you know a garage sale, a yard sale that they didn't even they weren't planning to go yeah. to, and it's like, hey, it's let's like- stop. And that's part of the collecting fun in itself, even if you only pick up some common items. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the internet sometimes, like when it comes to like the eBay and Amazon and that stuff, just irritates the hell out of me because it, it really, to me, like it just destroys the market. Because, like I said, people have all these, you know, common games that there's just so many of them in circulation. But they think they're super rare, and they're not. And so they have, like, a, a ridiculously amount of money on them. And it's just, it's not worth it. As far as the space, how do you work that out? Like, what is the kind of um, negotiations you have <laughs> with your wife to make sure that you... We actually you know, have a spare room, so it works out good. <laughs> oh, but if it bleeds out, then that's like, no, right? It's like, you can't leave that room? Um, we haven't got to that point yet. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll see what happens when, when the time comes, I guess. All right, so as far as your uh, Twin Galaxies, the world records and, and games, so tell us just about you, the beginning of, like, what games you like growing up playing. What games were you first exposed to? Um, okay, I, I'm trying to think. When I was just a young kid, probably 88, 89 was the first time I got a hold of a Nintendo controller. So, of course, I started with, like, Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt. You know, the games like that. Um, And then when the Super Nintendo came out, I really got into Zelda. Uh, I am a huge, huge, huge Zelda fan. I love Zelda. Uh, Hands down, it's going to be one of my definitely top five favorites um, out of all the games in the world. Um, 
so it kind of started with that. I remember, uh, you know, just being a kid, too. We used to play, play Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and Sega Genesis. We used to, me and my one friend, we used to spend hours playing Beavis and Butthead on, on Sega. Oh. <laughs> um, trying to beat the game, you know. Um, so it started, that's how it started. It started with that, and then it just gradually took off. Um, I remember when, excuse me, I remember when the pinball boom happened in the early 90s. That's when I got kind of exposed to, like, the arcade scene, the arcade side of it. Um, and I immediately got addicted to pinball and fell in love with pinball. And the game that done it for me was William's Funhouse. I can't even begin to imagine how much money I dumped into that damn game. <laughs> <laughs> as far as making that next transition, it's because it's, it's funny because I was talking with uh, Tim McVeigh about this, about... You know, back in the days, it wasn't like someone was saying to themselves, hey, you know what, I'm going to get the world record in Donkey Kong, I'm going to get the world record in Nibbler. It was more like, I'm playing this game, and the next thing you know, it's like, hey, you know what, I think I can do this. Was that the same process with you as far as getting these world records where you're just playing it, and then it's like, oh, I can go farther and, and get this high Well, score. you know, the, the whole thing with, like, me, with, like the, the, for me to chase, like, a world record, that really actually didn't happen until I didn't even start thinking about it or considering it until about 2010, which I know is just, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. um, I live in Ottawa, Iowa, which everybody knows it's the video game capital of the world. Um, in 2010, they had a huge, huge event called the Big Bang, and they inducted the first class into the International Video Game Hall of Fame. Um, I got to meet a lot of the people that I see, like in Chasing Ghost and um, King of Kong. And that's actually when I became friends with Tim McVeigh, too. And since then, we are just, we're, we're really tight. We go to concerts together. Uh, we go to the racetrack together. We do all kinds of stuff together. And we work together at the same factory. Um, so uh, it really didn't cross my mind until then. I see all these people, and I'm just like, man, that's, that's kind of cool, you know? And then uh, it was the following year, in 2011, uh, it was uh, Walter Day had put on the 30th anniversary Twin Galaxies event, and it was held at the Bridgeview Center in Atomwa. And it was that weekend um, I set my first world record scores, um, and it was on uh, the Xbox 360, and the game was um, Pinball Hall of Fame, the Williams Collection. Um, my fr uh, Myself and another one of my friends, we basically just went after it we took we we had referee with us um and it was all it was really cool it's done we've done it in a live setting that uh at the time it was uh, the head referee was um oh, dave nelson he's the one that actually verified um the first round of scores that i'd done and to me what's crazy is like my scores on it is just like so ridiculously low to me <laughs> um i have blown them scores out of the water i've just never resubmitted as far as just uh, what it takes to get that score, I mean, were you just playing normally, or like at some point does, does it kick into a real competition to get that score? Okay, well, when they announced that they're going to have that event, and they said that you know, there was going to be referees on hand, and excuse me, they had they already had a whole bunch of games already set up with referees. Like one of them was like Just Dance. So my wife. She plays Just Dance. She has world records on Just Dance. So she was over at the Just Dance area, you know, getting world records on that. Nice. Uh, you know, um, I'm trying to think. They had some, like, Call of Duty stuff. Um, they had uh, the Pac-Man DX Championship Edition, I think, was one of them. And there was a couple other ones. I can't remember um, exactly what they were. Um, but when they announced that they were going to do all that, I was like, huh, there's going to be referees there. This is, you know, a couple months prior. I said, I wonder if I start practicing my ass off. I wonder if I could do it live with the referee. That'd be cool because, you know, uh, then it would be automatically verified. And so when it got closer to time and the, uh, and the event actually got there, we talked to my friend and I that wanted to do this. We uh, talked to Dave Nelson, at, like again at the time was the head referee. And um, we set it up. That it was a three-day event, I believe. I think it was, yeah. It started actually on a Thursday night, but then it was Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So Sunday late morning we set it up with dave we had two we had one tv one xbox um and we just went for it as far as when you're there with all those gamers it's it because i I'm, I'm always curious about the aspect of 
uh, the fame that someone can get. And I know that sometimes people are like shy to talk about that because they don't want to think of games as fame. But I don't know if if people can get celebrated for other things, acting, sports, things like that. I don't think there's any problem with saying you're famous in video games. That's fine. And then, of course, we know there's egos just in competition as well. Do you oh. see any of that? Like when you go to these competitions, if you go to any of these cons or something like that, and there's some type of either world record competition or something like that, do you see that where people say, hey, I do want to be a celebrity, or that ego really kicks in? You know, I really haven't never seen the ego part of it. I mean, the ones that I've been involved in, uh, I mean, you get people that get, they, they really get into it. You know, they get jacked up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as far as, like, the ego goes, I mean, personally, I've, you know, I've never really seen ego from anybody on a personal standpoint. I, I really haven't. Um for the most part, I know myself, I try to keep it as friendly as possible. I mean, yes, it is a competition. You are trying to be number one. But I see things a little bit differently than most people. I try to just, just keep that that uh, friendly competition there. You know, even if I lost, I'll go up to the winner and be like, hey, man, congratulations. I'll shake their hand. You know, it's just that's just the way I am. That's how I was brought up. That's how I was raised. So... Do you ever see people there that maybe under the pressure of having, you know, the judges, the people watching, that they're not as good as maybe they would have if they were at home and then they submitted it uh, a record there? Like, is there some people that just can't perform that you've seen in, in a live setting? <laughs> That's funny you say that because that same weekend at the Twin Galaxies event, they had a, a gauntlet, <laughs> and I totally just choked out on it. I, I can't even get oh. like the first round of qualifying. That's how bad it was. And what it was is um, they had uh, it started. You started on like the uh, the Atari twenty six hundred, and then you ended up all the way down. I think it was like Xbox or something. And you had like every console in between. You had like Nintendo. You had like the Dreamcast. I can't remember all the all the systems, but there was quite a few systems. So each system um, you had different games that you were playing and you had different objectives before you could move on to the next screen to the next uh, game and for the love of me I could not get off of the damn Atari 2600 uh, the game was Pitfall oh. and, the, and the object to move on and the next the next game was um, it was on the NES it was Duck Hunt was the next one but I could not for the love of me I could not get off the damn Atari uh, then, like I said, the game was Pitfall, and the object was um, you had to get three prizes. Yeah, and it was on Pitfall to move on. And for the love of me, I, you know, and I've got big hands, okay? And that little damn joystick it just doesn't do it for me. Like, I actually have, like, a, a secondary market one for mine. It's, like, a bigger one that fits my hand more comfortably so I can play those games, but yeah, it was on an original joystick, and for the love of me, I just, I just couldn't do it, you know, I couldn't even get past the first round of qualifying, and I tried five different times to make it to the next bracket, just couldn't do it. And that's one of those things where you go home later, and then you crank it out, and you're like, why yeah, could I do yeah, this? Yeah, you go home, it's like, what the hell? I couldn't do that there, but I could do it right now, what the hell is going on? <laughs> you know? But yeah, I was I was really frustrated with myself on that. I was so mad. But what's cool is one of my other really good friends, he actually ended up winning the whole damn thing. Oh, nice. <laughs> as far as when you're there and you're, you know, do you have like a story or funny, other funny things that have happened when you've either been at competition or just events where there's a lot of gamers together? Because I think a lot of times people get this misconception about conventions. Like, I, I, like people were saying back in the day with the uh, Blizzard, BlizzCon, oh, it must be terrible, all these gamers. And, th man, when I went, gamers are partying, hanging out. It was such a great experience. Oh, absolutely. One of my favorite events, and it's actually coming up here next month. It's in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's called MGC, which stands for Midwest Gaming Classic. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love that event. Um the people that started it, it literally started with, like, 20-some people, like, in a Boy Scout, like, basement or something. And now it's, like, it takes up, like, this huge five-star hotel. They set tents up outside. They have, like, extra security there. Oh, man. Um, they see, you know, over 5,000 people in a weekend easily. Easily. It is so big. So, so big. Um, but the best, what I like about what the best part to me is, is... 
when the event closes down at 8 o'clock to the public, and you start having all these little after parties, where you actually have to have a special wristband to go to these after parties. You know, it, it's just all about a good time. Everybody playing games, you know. Uh, there's a little bit of, you know, adult beverages involved. And, <laughs> you know, and of course, you know, you're going to have that. And uh, the after party that I, I usually attend is the Star Worlds Arcade after party. Uh, they always have a big room down there for that event. They're, they're out of DeKalb, Illinois. And um, what's cool about them is they're like one of the, the not the one, they're, they're, they're the, the last... Um, like neighborhood arcade in existence, you know, which is really cool. Uh, and Pat and Glenn, the guys that run it, they are excellent, super nice people. They always have an, a really awesome after party um, at MGC. They always order up a, a whole bunch of pizza, and I mean, it's just it's just a really good time. It, it is. And last year, when I, I think it was was it last year, or the year before, I think it was last year, maybe. Um, I actually got to see my first Donkey Kong kill screen done live. I mean, oh. I've seen it on TV, right. you know, on, on the streams and stuff. You see it on the movies and the documentaries, but that was my very first time ever seeing it done live. And I remember, and I'm friends with the guy who done it. Uh, his name is Eric Tesler. And so anyway, he starts playing the, you know, playing the game. And I, oh, about 45 minutes after him standing there playing the damn thing, I went up and I made, the, I made a little joke to him, you know, the old Brian Koo line from king of kong you know there's a donkey kong kill screen coming up everyone's interested you know so i went up and i said that to him and he starts laughing he goes well, i don't know maybe so then more time passes and i'm like damn i mean he's on pace man he's he's gonna fucking do it you know and so i start uh i start telling everybody it's like i start you know i start talking telling some of my friends i'm like dude eric's on pace he's he's gonna kill it he's gonna ks it and so some other people like kind of heard me talking about it. next year like there's this huge crowd around the damn Donkey Kong machine. People setting up their cameras and everything, starting to record. They want to get this, you know. And he he KS'd it. And what was cool is um is Pat uh said that he he thought that was the very first time that their machine got KS'd, which is really cool. Was there ever um like a person of persons like when you went to any of these events that you were like I guess maybe not awestruck per se, but you were just like really proud and, and happy to see like someone either in gaming and you're like, wow, that was really cool to meet this person. Uh, uh, the very first time I got to meet some like the big names like Billy Mitchell. Um, I, I, I got to meet like Steve Wiebe before. Um, I think one of the coolest people that I got, that I got to meet uh, and I actually had a conversation with the first time I ever met the guy. I had a, like an hour and a half conversation with him. It was weird, but it was really cool at the same time. It was Matt Brass, um, and he's in uh, Chasing Ghost. I don't know if you remember that or mm-hmm. not, but yeah, I mean, yeah, he was super down to earth. I remember, I remember like uh, when I first before I realized who it was, I was like, he, he had like you know like this crazy hairdo, and uh, he had um, like these orange parachute pants on, like MC Hammer style. And, <laughs> You just had like this really unique style about him. I was like, man, who the hell is that guy? Well, then I realized it's Matt Brass. I'm like, oh shit, you know? So I go up and I start talking to him, and like next thing you know, like an hour and a half later goes by, and it's like, damn. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I've met some pretty cool people. I've met like uh, Fatality. Everybody knows who he is. Yeah. He's a big PC gamer. Um, I was super stoked to meet him just because he's an awesome guy. Um, and then, of course, like the granddaddy of them all is Walter Day. <laughs> yeah. how, could, how could you not love that guy? Definitely. I, I, now, of course, you have multiple records that you've, that you've been got, able to get. Yeah, I've got 28 right now. 28. 28. Wow. 20. That's sweet. Is there one overall that's just like, like the other ones, like you said, maybe you said, oh, I, I know I could beat that score, and I have. But was there one yeah. where you're like, okay, if someone asked me to put this up on a plaque, that's the one I'm doing? Honestly, none of them, because to me, to, to me, they're all low and mediocre. Because I, I have, I wasn't at like top performance the day that I set those. Um, I, I know I could do way better, and I've done way better, but I've just never taken the time to resubmit. And the crazy thing is, is to my, I mean, I haven't checked in a while, but excuse me, um, my scores are still there. You know, they're not that high, like. My son can. My sons can probably beat him. They're that low, <laughs> you know. 
Now, I asked Tim this, and I'm always curious because, you know, a lot of people, especially who watch a lot of our interviews, are older gamers. And there's, even though gaming has gotten to the point where it's more accepted, you still have people that will say things like, oh, you're still playing games, and you're how old, and this and that, and grow up, and just silly things like that, even though we've seen people playing games in their 70s and stuff. Yeah. What do you say, like, to people who, who say that? Like, oh, you're playing games, and you're married, and you it's like, like, what do you say to people like, to like that? Honestly, I'm, I mean, I've, I've heard of that. I've, I've, I, you know, I know what you're talking about. Honestly, I'm 31, and I haven't had that problem. Um, hell, my mom and dad play games. You know, my stepdad plays games. Um, people that are older than me that I'm friends with, they play games. I really, I really haven't had that problem. Um, you know, my grandma, she's a, she's she's like 80 some years old, and you know. She don't play games no more, but she she doesn't. She's not like, like, uh, oh, how do you say it? She doesn't like really come down on me about it, and she thinks it's like really cool that I have world record scores like with Twin Galaxies and like uh, I'm on a trading card and and whatnot. And she she thinks that's cool, you know. She doesn't really come down on me for playing games. Um, like I said, my wife she plays games. Um, that was just like an awesome connection that we had from the get go. Uh, we have two sons. They absolutely love gaming. <laughs> um, I'll never forget the first time I brought the first arcade machine home. They're like, you know, this is so cool, you know. And um, they like to play the old stuff too, which I think is really awesome. They they like to play, you know, like Duck Hunt, like the older games, like on the Nintendo and uh, and things like that. Um, and like right now, they're like really big into like Angry Birds. They've been playing some like the Minion games, um, and biggest thing they're really into is five nights at freddy's oh man that game <laughs> so yeah my yeah my two boys are they're all about five nights at freddy's like we had to go out and buy them t-shirts and the little plush dolls and the, you know what i mean like you just that's the stuff you have to do but yeah the kids are all about it that's awesome. I've, I've, I've had the privilege to talk to people who have grown up in, like, I guess what you could call a gaming family. I have a couple of friends who the entire family used to play EverQuest together. So I think it's really cool when you have that because, I mean, obviously you can do everything that you're supposed to do in life, everything that you want to do, and still exactly. enjoy games. So there's no yep. reason to be well, like, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. Yeah, and see, and with me having kids, I mean, we make it very clear, okay, yeah, it's okay to, to play games, but... Life is not all about gaming. You have to make sure that you get outside. Um, you know, there's other things in, there's other things in life other than gaming. And uh, you know, if I spent all my time gaming, I, I'd be homeless in an alley somewhere. You know, because obviously, you know, you have to make money and you have responsibilities as an adult and a parent and whatnot. But and we teach our kids that that you know, hey, it's okay if you want to play on your tablet or play a game or whatever. But you know, remember, we're going to regulate it. You're not going to be on it all day because there's more to life than it, you know, than just sitting here doing this all day, Definitely. you know. And then, and then going back to, like, the whole family thing, um, I, I remember, like, when I was growing up, too, like, my dad, um, him and some of his friends, they would, they'd, they'd sit around, they'd play, like, you know, like, PTO and, like, Liberty or Death and, like, war games, like, on the Super Nintendo and just, we'd have, like, board game nights. And I even remember, like, growing up when I was, like, 12 or 13 i actually remember sitting at the table with like my mom and dad's friends and stuff playing dungeons and dragons you know (laughs) so so yeah i mean it's it's been a part of my life you know and like i said i mean i'm fortunate enough that i have a wife that she's into it that's one of the things that we share together and then our two sons are are getting into it very cool well, I just wanted to thank you for coming on and talking with us today. It was, it was really interesting to hear not only about the retro collecting, but also the gameplay and things like that. I hope you come on and talk with us again in the future. Absolutely. I, like, I got one more thing, too. Sure. Uh, anybody who's watching this, um, if you, you can get a hold of me on Facebook. Uh, I'm actually the only Terry Burtlow on Facebook. It's T-E-R-R-Y, last name B-U-R-T-L-O-W. And if you send me a message with your mailing address, I will send you one of these in the mail. Oh, nice. The trade for kit. free. Okay? Cool. And then uh, and I'll definitely take care of you. You send me your uh, mailing address, and I'll take care of you. Um, and then maybe, oh, every 
five or something, I'll throw in every fifth person or something that does this, I'll throw in one of my rare cards, which is this card. Uh, it was from the live events at um, um, a couple years ago. From it was a Twin Galaxies event um, in Fairfield, Iowa. Uh, this card, the rare card, is only 275 of them in existence. And once they're gone, they're gone. Oh man, nice. So, yeah, it's it's a rare card. So, and by the way, your your Facebook page is pretty funny. I was looking at some of the stuff on there. <laughs> it's great. So, yeah, so I try to you know I. I I'm a really easy go guy. I like to be the, the, the funny guy, the you know, the guy that makes everybody laugh. Uh, I do enjoy life. I really do. I, 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 I mean, everybody gets mad and angry, of course. I try not to. I try to stay positive on everything. I mean, and just enjoy life and enjoy uh, being around the people that I, that I love and, you know, friends and family and whatnot. I just, you know, life's too damn short. To, to, just to sum it up real quick, life is too damn short. Exactly. Well, thanks, Terry, for, for that. And, and I hope that you guys will go on there and go to his Facebook page. I'll put that on the link for this show so that you can see that, too, so you can take advantage of that. But thanks again, uh, Terry, for coming on and talking with us. No problem, man. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me.